What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're talking all about the upper respiratory tract. Now, this may be new for some of you or a review for some of you. No matter what, I'm going to make it worth your time. Let's dive in. All right, now, as I stated, I am here today to talk all about the upper respiratory tract. I'm going to tell you the need to know information so that you can utilize this material. You're not trying to memorize this. You need to understand these concepts so that you can apply them. And I'm going to tell you two ways to apply this information today. Here we go. When we look at this, we see we have kind of a skeletal view of, the, of, a, of a skull. And then we also see where we have... Uh, the view of a patient's airway, both there and there. Now, to label these, we need to understand that there's really four portions to the upper respiratory tract. Now, one of them breaks down into three portions, but for the most part, we're going to call it four, okay? So the first one is the nasal cavity. This is our nose, specifically the inside of our nose. Now, the thing you need to know about the nose or the nasal cavity is that it divides into two separate sides. You have your left nair and your right nair. Those are the two passageways inside the nose. They are separated by what's called the septum. Now that's in the middle. Now once you get into these nasal cavities, you can kind of see in the image over here, if you look at a skeletal image, you'll be able to see where you have these things, these protrusions from the lateral walls of the nares, these are referred to as the conchas or the turbinates. Now there's three of them. You're probably gonna have to label them at some point in your life. How do you label them? Well, if you think about them like shelves, one, two, three, here's what you need to remember. You have a top shelf that's superior. You have a bottom shelf that's inferior. And then the middle is the middle. So you have superior, middle and inferior turbinates or conchas okay and they're on both sides superior middle inferior on those now what they do is they serve a purpose and you don't have to believe me on this because this all comes out of egan's in the 12th edition uh when you look at it this all comes out of there i don't make anything up i have uh resources to document everything that i say and this is what it comes down to. Uh, these bony shells are called the superior, middle, and inferior concha or turbinates. Here you go. Remember this. The role of the concha is to increase the surface area and complexity of the nasal cavity, enabling the cavity, the nasal cavity to work as a passageway, filter, humidifier, and heater of the inhaled gas. Important. It just said it for you right there. As a filter, a heater, and a humidifier, as a passage of gas for that gas that comes in. That's what it does. It's not just two tubes. There's shelves in there that say, you know what? We're gonna help more effectively heat, humidify, and filter this gas coming in. Now, that's number one, the nasal cavity. Now, number two is the oral cavity. Now, the oral cavity is also made up of several, several pieces of anatomy. You have the hard palate and the soft palate, and you have the tongue and the uvula, you know, the uvula, that little dangly thing in the back of your throat, that thing. We also have the tonsils. So we have uh, several components that make up the oral cavity. We know the oral cavity does several different things. We know we use it to speak or to phonate. You want to know that word. I'm going to put it up here, phonate. The word phonate or phonation. Now, I've had students miss this question on an exam because they didn't know the word phonate or phonation. They didn't know what it was. Phonate is to speak, to make sounds, okay? To phonate, that's what that means. We know the oral cavity helps with that. We also know that the oral cavity helps to prepare food for digestion, okay? We also know that the oral cavity is a passageway for gas to come in and down to our airways just like the nasal cavity allows for that as well. We also know that the oral cavity will help to protect us from inhaling or choking on anything that we shouldn't be inhaling into our airways. <clears throat> That's the oral cavity. Now, the next one we get to is back here in the back. This is called the pharynx. Now, the pharynx is the one that turns into three kind of smaller portions because 
The posterior portion of the nasal cavity is the nasopharynx. The posterior segment of the oral cavity is the oropharynx. You see, we're not talking about the, the, the anterior portions. We're not talking about the mouth and the nose. We're talking about the pieces in the back where the, where the nasal cavity, where the nose turns into the pharynx. That's the nasopharynx and the mouth, the oropharynx. And then we know that the pharynx comes down here and connects to the larynx. This portion is called the laryngopharynx. Okay, so we see where the pharynx is basically the posterior segment. This is uh, towards the back where your where your gag reflex is located. Again, important in protecting the lower airway from aspiration and things getting into those airways that shouldn't get into those airways. Now. I told you I was going to give you information that you could apply. So before we talk about the larynx, because this is number four, this is number four, but we're going to talk about it separately. Remember what the key roles for these are, right? Box 9.4, box 9.4, page 183. Go check it out. Functions of the upper airway, passageway for gas flow, filter, heater, humidification, sense of smell and taste, phonation, protection of the lower airways. Now, when we sometimes have patients who need an artificial airway put in, then you see where they are now breathing in through this tube that is located beneath the larynx. What does that mean? Why is that important? Why are we even talking about this, Joe? Remember, what are the key portions of this? To phonate to protect, but most importantly, important, not, not, not necessarily most importantly, but equally as important is to filter, heat, and humidify. So when you have a patient breathing gas down here, this is now bypassed and we must heat and humidify that gas for this patient. And if we don't, then there's no way that that gas is prepared for the tracheal airways and out to our alveoli. That's just not simply going to happen. So we have to remember anytime we are dealing with an artificial airway that bypasses the upper airway, it's our job to filter heat, humidify that gas for proper preparation for the lower airways. Don't forget that. Now, remember I told you we're going to go down here and talk about the trachea. Well, here it is right here. Now, the first thing you recognize is that the trachea looks like a shield or at least that's what I recognize. To me, it looks like a shield. I look at this and I go, wow, look at this. Look at this thing right here. This thing is like, looks like a, looks like a, something I would take into battle with me, right? I would, I would have it up and I would use it as my shield in battle. That's exactly what it is because again, this is the portion made up of bones and cartilages that support and protect the opening to our trachea. Why is that important? Well, because wouldn't you want that part of your anatomy to be protected? This is where air comes in and our airway begins right here. This is where our airway begins. And so we want to protect that. Now, also inside of this region are the vocal cords. Okay, so this is the tracheal opening or the windpipe. These columns right here are the vocal cords. This is, again, the beginning of phonation. Air comes past the vocal cords that make vibrates and make sounds. And we learn how to use that to create communication, to speak, to talk. That's what happens right there. All of this is located within this shield that we know to be the larynx. Now you can feel this on yourself. If you identify your Adam's apple and if you touch it, you can kind of feel where there's kind of a depression in it. That's this dip right here. That is what you're feeling when you identify your Adam's apple, okay? <clears throat> now let's talk about these specifically here for just a second. This bone at the top is called the hyoid bone. It's important because it supports the base of the tongue. And then we have this cartilage right here, this middle one. This is the thyroid cartilage. That's the thyroid cartilage. Now, the thyroid cartilage is connected to the hyoid hyoid bone by a membrane. See this membrane right here? Guess what that's called? Yeah, you guessed it. The thyroid membrane. 
the hyoid bone, the thyroid, the thyroid, the thyroid membrane. That's what it is. And then we have a bone down here that if we look at it from the anterior view, we see it. And then when we go to the posterior view, go to the posterior view, we see that it goes all the way around the windpipe. It makes a full circle. This is called the cricoid cartilage. So the cricoid cartilage makes a full circle. That's the only one in the human body that does this. It's named after this Greek word, word krikos, K-R-I-K-O-S, krikos. And it just means spherical, a circle. Cricoid cartilage. I promise you, some of you are going to have an exam. So say, what is the only cartilage in the body that makes a complete full circle? Answer, cricoid. Circle starts with a C. So does the cricoid cartilage. C for circle, 100%. Just beneath the thyroid cartilage. That does not make a full circle. If you look at it over here, these are the lateral walls of the cricoid cartilage. So you see where they make a building or a shield around the opening of the trachea where the cricoid cartilage goes all the way around it. Now, once we understand that, we realize that we have this structure that looks kind of like a leaf. This is inside of the larynx. That leaf right there is called the epiglottis. That's what it is, okay? That's the epiglottis. You can also see the tip of the epiglottis when you look anteriorly. It's right here. This is also the epiglottis. We're just looking at it two different views. Now, the epiglottis is important because it closes and opens over the glottic opening or the opening to the trachea. Again, what does the upper respiratory tract do? One of the functions is to protect the lower airways. The epiglottis plays a role in that by preventing food and, and liquid material from entering into our windpipe. You're going to learn it to be the trachea and aspirating or inhaling things down the wrong pipe when we drink, eat, or swallow, okay? So we see that we don't want that to happen. The epiglottis protects that from happening. It also allows us to cough effectively. We can close and bear down, build up a lot of pressure, and then, and then, and then exhale very, very aggressively to create a coughing mechanism to clear secretion. So the a lot of important things here within the larynx. Now, I want to give you another one. How do we apply this, right? What are we talking about here, Joe? Well, remember, the epiglottis is here. This is the epiglottis when you look at the superior view. On top of that is the base of the tongue. So the base of the tongue comes down to the hyoid bone, and then the epiglottis is connected down here. This space between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis is called the vollecula. The vollecula is very, very important for when you start to learn about intubation procedures, specifically oral intubation procedures, because what we will do is we will utilize a Macintosh blade along with the laryngoscope to identify, open up, displace the epiglottis and see the tracheal opening to see the trachea so we can put a tube in through the vocal cords into that patient's trachea. That's why you need to know what the vollecula is. Now, I'm not making this up. Again, page 187, here's what it says. The base of the tongue is attached to the epiglottis by three folds. These folds form a space between the tongue and the epiglottis called the vollecula, which is a key landmark in oral intubations. You gotta wanna remember this. This place is called the vollecula. It's the space between the epiglottis and the base of the tongue. That's the importance of the larynx. That's the importance of being able to recognize the vollecula, even if you just know what the word is. If, it, if you're not talking about a Macintosh blade, or an anatomy exam, you just see the word vollecula six months down the road, you got to know that that has nothing to do with the conversation unless you're talking about intubating a patient 100%. Hey, go check out my, my, my free resources class on my virtual academy platform. Um, look at the link in the video description below to access that course right here. 
I'm going to actually put a quiz in there based on this video. So you will see that. Okay. So go in there, test your knowledge, see if you got it right. We'll see uh, here how I can help you to be uh, a better student and understand what you're doing as a respiratory therapist. You can also find access to my TMC bootcamp and my CSE bootcamp when you're, if you're looking to pass your board exams. And then also my mini courses about ABG interpretation and basic pharmacology. That's the upper respiratory track. I'm respiratory coach. Here's where you can find me. You're here now, right now on YouTube. Stay here. Please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, hit the like button and turn on all bell notifications. So you know when I post another video, which is going to be soon, be ready for it. Respiratory coach on Instagram, respiratory coach on TikTok. Come find me and have fun. Let's do it. Joe Lewis at LinkedIn. Good stuff happening over there. Send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I'd love to continue this conversation on with you and help you be the very, very best respiratory therapy student and ultimately practitioner that you can be all for the betterment of your patients. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.